Hello everyone and welcome. We're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. Then it'd be a great day to be in the church and to see the, all the red that we have celebrating this feast day. But uh, the church is very, very busy t today, so I can't uh, uh, do the mass there. So we're doing it in my house chapel. This is the, the chapel where the priests and brothers gather for morning and evening prayer. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So it's Pentecost, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate this great mystery, we call to mind our sins, and we ask for God's healing and guidance in our lives. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to bring us, to bring peace to a world marred by sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father of light, from whom every good gift comes, send your spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind, and by the flame of your wisdom, open the horizons of our minds. Loosen our tongues to sing your praise in words beyond the power of speech, for without your spirit, we could never raise our voices in words of peace or announce the truth that Jesus is Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to share all three readings with you today. And the first one is from the Acts of the Apostles, and this is the classic description of the day of Pentecost. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem, and at this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? How then does each of us hear them in our native language? We are Parthians and Medes and Elamites. We're inhabitants of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think just three images I'd like you to keep in your mind as we continue reading the scriptures is the wind, right? The wind is so loud that people on the streets begin to gather uh, around the spot where the disciples are. Fire and the, the ability to speak in different tongues, right? So those are the three images that mark this Pentecost event. We move on to the second reading, which is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And he's teaching them about the Holy Spirit and the place of the Holy Spirit in the community. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. 
There are different forms of worship, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who provides all of them in everyone. To each individual is given the manifestation of the Spirit and is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here, uh, just again to point out a couple of things before we move on. Uh, three things he's bringing to them. First of all, their very faith. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Uh, even our faith uh, is a gift. Secondly, we're all given gifts by the Spirit to nurture the community. Right? That's always meant not for ourselves, but for others. And then finally, this Spirit within us makes us one. Right? There's no divisions among us, slave or Greek, right? uh, Jew or Greek, slave or free person. There aren't any divisions when we're united in the Spirit. Right? So these are some of the, the fruits of the Spirit that he's talking about. Then finally, the Gospel itself for today. It's taken from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see truth mentioned a number of times in, in this passage. So Jesus is, truth is, truth is that inner life of God, right? right? There's no duplicity, there's nothing uh, that's untrue within God. And that's what is being imparted. That very inner life of God is being imparted uh, to us through the Spirit that Jesus is promising. So we have lots of things to think about today. We've been on a seven week Easter journey. Right? It's been seven weeks since we celebrated Easter. Today we celebrated the conclusion. It's like a big exclamation point at the end of the Easter season. Uh, and we look a little bit about where we've been. I think it's important to do that. We've looked at some of the uh, resurrection stories. Right? We saw the two disciples fleeing Jerusalem, meeting Jesus on the road and not recognizing him, and only when they break bread with him do they recognize him. Right? A, a resurrection story focused around the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread as it was called in those days. Right? When, they, when he broke the bread with them, they recognized him. So we're being alerted. You're going to find the risen Lord in the Eucharist that you celebrate. We saw Thomas, and we saw him abandoning his, his disbelief and calling God his Lord. Then we heard Jesus talking about his relationship with us. He's the good shepherd, right? He finds pastors uh, where, that will feed us. Again, uh, the Eucharist is in that image. Uh, also, as a good shepherd, He's willing to lay down his life for his sheep. So he's always guarding us, uh, accompanying us in all our trials and tribulations. He told us that uh, his relationship with us is like the vine and the branches. Right? He's the vine with the branches that bear the fruit. So again, he's with us constantly, uh, giving his life to us so that we might be fruitful, that there might be the fruit of the kingdom the way he puts it. Then we heard about uh, some of the images of uh, 
the anointing. Uh, we call it the anointing. It's when the Holy Spirit descends and focuses our lives in a different way. Uh, so that's, that's the anointing. And uh, what we've seen is Jesus praying right, for our minds and our hearts to be at peace. So often in those resurrection stories, we see that call for peace. And that's the inner peace of God. That's the, the shalom that relates to the Sabbath, when the seventh day when God rested, right? That, that, that peace that God experiences within himself, that that be our peace too, right? That, that peace can break through fear, it can break through tribulations and hardships. Uh, it's always there. And it helps us to understand the scriptures, right? To really feed ourselves on the word of God. So again, let's be, with all that, let's look now at some of the imagery that we see in the Pentecost story, because it's rich and it's important. So when the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind and it filled the entire house in which they were. This image first of all uh, reminds us of the opening lines of the Bible, right? Uh, when the world was just chaotic water and the breath of God, the Ruah Yahweh it's called, the breath of God started to push the, the, the waters back and the dry land appears. So it's that power of creation, that breath. It's also the whirlwind that Elijah is taken up in. Right? Elijah is taken up to heaven in a fiery chariot, but first the wind comes, and that wind changes everything and lifts him up and brings him to heaven. It's that, it's that transitional, that transformational uh, power of God. It's the east wind that blew over the waters of the Red Sea so that the Israelites could pass through. And it's the breath that Jesus breathed on his disciples when he first appeared to them after the resurrection, telling them, now, now that I've breathed on you, now that you're new, now that you've been recreated, you know, now's the time uh, you can forgive people's sins and that will happen. We look at the fire. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them. This is the fire of the burning bush, right? Jesus, when Moses saw this the bush on fire, he goes to see what it's all about. He meets God and God reveals to him his name, I am. And it's that, that revelation that comes with, with seeing God. This is also the pillar of fire that led the, the, the Israelites at nighttime on their journey to the promised land. This is the refiner's fire. And Jesus put it this way, how I long to spread fire on the earth. And the prophets often spoke of a purifying fire that would come before the Messiah would come. Uh, it's all of these things. So we look at the, all these images and we see a, a theme, new creation. You know, we're, we're new creatures when the Holy Spirit enters our lives, right? We're purified, and we can purify others when the Spirit moves into our lives, right? We can heal the way Jesus healed. We can say his words. We can reach out to others in that profound way. We can do what he did because the Spirit is working through us. Finally, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Recreated, purified, their hearts opened to the Word of God. The Spirit destroyed the barriers, preventing them from witnessing to the resurrected Lord. Right? That's our message today. That we've been reborn. We've been purified. Right? We're given the strength to proclaim. So today, I don't want you just to think of Pentecost as something that happened a long time ago. Uh, that's not the purpose of this feast. This feast is a feast of renewal, where we really invoke the Spirit to be on us, to be upon us, to free our tongues that we might speak His Word, right? to be in peace so that we can be witnesses no matter what the consequences. 
Now that's what we're asking today. That's what we're renewing in our own lives today. So it's an important day for us, this Pentecost day. So I'm going to end with a kind of consecration, uh, a prayer asking God for all of us to be anointed in the Spirit. Loving Father, gathered in your name, we implore you, drive all our fears from us, pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts, purify us, and speak your name to us from the eternal fire of your love. Loosen our tongues that we might speak only your word, that we might witness to you, to be one with your word made flesh, that our word may heal as his healed, that our word may speak your truth as he did. May we bring your fire into the earth. May we be salt for the earth and light for the world. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, grant that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those made your adopted children by uniting them with your only begotten Son, this same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, filled with Easter joy, every land and people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers sing the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed, the font of all holiness. Make these gifts holy by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and the Apostles and all the saints, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord God, keep within us the vigor of your spirit and protect the gifts you have given to your church. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bow down our heads and pray for God's blessing. The Father of light, enlighten the minds of the disciples by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. May God bless us and give us the Spirit's many gifts. Amen. May that fire that hovered over the heads of the disciples as tongues of flame make our hearts glow with pure light. 
Amen. God inspired speech in different tongues to proclaim one faith. May God strengthen our faith and fill us with hope. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Okay, so have a wonderful day. And really keep your hearts open to the Spirit. Let the Spirit guide you and really um, uh, enter our world through you in a special way. Have a good day.